Welcome to the Leaders Live Roundtable. So excited to have another conversation and bring new leader to the table today. We're going to be talking about unlearning, which is so important in these times to flow. So stay tuned for a really great show. Welcome back. We're welcoming Rome, you know, Rome, you know, Sunny from the New Earth, Tim and Sharon, of course, and our newest leader today, we have Andrew Moss joining us. I'll be introducing everybody here real soon. Um, and as I said, we're going to be talking about unlearning. This is a intergenerational conversation, as you can see here, and so powerful just to hear from everyone in our diversity. Uh, so let's get to the introductions. We have uh, Rome. Rome is native to the Midwest US. He's a yogi and a land and animal caregiver and some define him as a sage, empathic, intuitive life coach. And he loves to serve and inspire others. He's also an artist and host of the new Studio Rome podcast called Come As You Are. And we have Andrew, Andrew Moss. Welcome, thank you so much for being here. Uh, he has been a trusted coach and advisor to aspirational humans for over three decades. He's helped Olympians, artists, students, entrepreneurs, and more to figure out what they really want, quiet their mind, and go out and create in their own unique way. He's a father to four daughters and enjoys time in and on and around the water. Just like me, Andrew. <laughs> you got your surfboards in the background there. And then, of course, we have Tim and Sharon. Tim, co-founder with Flow Network. You've seen him all over here on Flow Network and Sharon, and they created the, the boutique business consulting, all types of businesses where they, where they say the core of business is people and the core of people is light. So today we're going to talk about unlearning and what's, what's this mean when you're pointing? What does this pointing mean? My it's bio. Convenient. You forgot about oh, my bio. Sunny. <laughs> <Sunny. Okay. laughs> thank you. Sunny, Sunny, thank you for being here so much. Um, Sunny is a conscious content creator and a leader of the New Earth Project. And he aspires to create a world centered around love, joy, and hope. Thank you guys for <laughs> getting me to shout out Sunny there. Um, obviously, you can hear from our bios that we all have a very common vision and kind of reason for being here. And yet we also at Flow Network love to celebrate our diversity and hear from everybody, our perspective about things and just have a flowing conversation about some really important topics. And nothing is scripted. We're just going to kind of flow, but I wanted to open with this because I, I just decided to do a little um, Google unlearning and psycho psychology today says that unlearning is the process through which we break down the origins of our thoughts, attitudes, behaviors, and feelings and biases. And it's about asking ourselves some really important questions. So I'm just going to throw it out and whatever sticks, sticks, and we don't have to talk about this necessarily, but I thought it would be cool to just sort of set the stage with this. So some of the questions we can ask are, where do these beliefs come from? Do these support my mental health? Is this in alignment with the life I want? Is this congruent with my authenticity and the person I am and the person I want to become? So for the lightning round, I thought, you know, what, what question could we just quickly touch on here? And as we have done with the themes for most of the shows, we've said, we've sort of been just talking about the big changes that have happened in the last couple of years. So, what have you been unlearning or what's a theme or topic you've been unlearning in the last two years? And I'll start with myself. And for me, one of the first things that came to mind was love to really understand what unconditional mm. love is. So I've been learning the ways what I thought love was and how that's been influencing me or not. 
So let's go around the circle. We'll start with Rome and then Sunny and then Tim and Sharon and then Andrew. Rome, what have you been on learning in the last couple of years? Excellent, Sarah. Thank you. Well, for me, it's it's all about not identifying with the programming I've learned from my parents or friends, basically individualizing my own feelings and unlearning all that dense energy that I've been carrying around. Beautiful. Sunny? One of the main things that sticks out for me for unlearning things is not coming from a place of lack and saying like, oh, I wish I had this or I wish I could do this or and just being grateful for what I have right now. And yeah, beautiful. and just shifting more into an abundant, abundant thoughts. Love it. Tim. Tim, I, for me, unlearning, uh, I see it around performance, having spent a lot of time working with businesses. So performance improvement. And uh, for me, unlearning is very, very central to the notion of helping people sustain results or helping myself sustain results. And which then requires that I got to unlearn what was actually contributing to great results in one moment. And then maybe the next moment and in the third moment, there's no longer, that's no longer relevant. So I have to actually start to unlearn. So it, it is, it is present. It's something that happens every second of every day for me, which I never really started out that way, but that seems to be the consistent theme for me anyway, is just unlearn constantly, constantly. Sharon, what have you been on learning in the last couple of years? Well, you know, the, the uh, COVID pandemic is huge for people and that's been a huge impact on their lives, but I was in a bubble for two years before that. So it really hasn't changed my life at all, but in that bubble, and as my life has been getting smaller, I have been uh, unlearning and learning and then relearning the power of my internal resourcefulness, my internal world. And as my physical world gets smaller, which it still is continuing to do on many levels, learning how to be expansive in the face of so many external constraints is an unlearning because I grew up in a, in a time when the physical world and the outside world was, you know, we thought that was everything. And certainly I was taught that was everything. And if I relied on the stimulus from my external world telling me to be happy or sad, I'd be a very unhappy person right now. All right. Thanks. And Andrew, what about you? What have you been unlearning? Yeah, I think the biggest thing has been, um, you know, that for for myself and for a lot of people I, I work with, um, routine was a was masquerading as certainty. Mm, and yes. I think what I've unlearned is, or what I've learned is that you know, routine was still conscious choice choices every day. And I think the pandemic has actually made it abundantly clear that we actually have more choices, even though we've had restrictions. I think the choices in how we spend our time, for me at least, and the people I work with have not been limited because it's really an internal choice of how we're choosing to spend our time and what, with what energy and, and on what activities. So that's been, I think, the biggest awakening for me and for the people I, I serve. I love that. I have found the same thing. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Well, so that was our, our lightning round. We don't have as many people on today, um, which was why we decided to do the lightning round, because we really want everyone to kind of dive deep into this conversation. And maybe the next thing is, what do you what are the what do you think the challenges that people have with unlearning and whoever wants to go with that? It, it's been my observation that unlearning is. Is, is something that um, I don't re ever recall learning about unlearning until I started doing the work that we've been, my, my Sharon and I have been doing for you know a long time, um, working with performance uh, in businesses. And the notion of unlearning uh, struck me at the, at the time as something, hey, that's a cool way of actually getting someone to realize, hey, what you're doing right now, maybe you need to change. And the thing that sticks out of my mind the most over the years is to recognize that that is, it's just a wheel, it's constant. 
because just because it worked today doesn't mean it's going to work tomorrow, which, which in my frame of reference, because having been on the planet for a long time, as soon as you actually get a winning game, keep the winning game going. But there has been times constantly when the performance results just shifted. Things were working well and then shift and things were working well and then shift and go, what's up? I'm still the same person. I'm still making the same choice. I'm still making the same things out there. And I, I recognized at the time it, it all had everything to do with. <laughs> Anybody else want to riff off of that? Yeah. The, the dog. Andrew? Well, yeah, I, uh, I was going to go somewhere else. So, and maybe I will just to stay, stay true yeah. to where I was feeling it. Um, you know, I think unlearning uh, starts with, first of all, being willing to um, recognize how the way we've been was protecting us. And to unlearn something is to be vulnerable to, to having to write a new script for ourselves, right? To let go of the story that's been, you know, we've been hiding in or that's been protecting us. And that, you know, might have been how we blamed somebody else or or the way we saw the world, you know, versus us, or whatever it might have been, you know, unlearning, in a lot of ways, actually requires us to really examine those stories and and be okay with stepping out with a different a different story and being seen in a different way. So that that's what it's been for me, and you know, uh, a lot of people that I've been talking to. Um, but I think that's a good thing. I think that's a great thing, and you know. We, two weeks ago, we were talking about letting go. And for me, like letting go is so similar to unlearning. And it's like letting go of the stories that we've been told or that we're telling ourselves that are a lot of the times unconscious. And that's the work that I do with clients and with what, what I call market telling is like, let's really listen to what the market is telling us, like what our community is telling us. Does, do we really believe those things? Are they still serving us? And then what are the stories that I'm telling to the market as a leader? Like, what am I saying is possible or is not possible? Do I want to continue feeding that? Or am I limiting our evolution with those stories? And then what are the stories that I'm telling myself? Mm. Like, what do I really believe about what's possible for my life? So I, I like what you said, Andrew, is like, it's, it's interesting and it's the paradox, like everything's a paradox is our freedoms or our, our, we've had more restrictions, you know, imposed on us in the last couple of years. And yet somehow I feel more free than I ever have before because I really had the time to go in and reflect on what do I really want? Like my whole routine was disrupted and I got to spend so much time reflecting on who I am, what I really want and then own my power as the creator of my reality and say, hey, like what is possible? And if I'm holding on to anything, any stories that are limiting, like the Sunny you were saying, like that was what you've been learning is like, where, where am I having stories that are around lack? And then letting those go. Yeah, that's so good. Sunny, do you have anything you wanna add? I love hearing from your generation. Yeah, just, the thing that's coming in my mind is just being honest with ourselves and just sit it, just sitting down, sitting down on the bed and really just asking yourself the question, what it, what am I doing right now that is not beneficial or brings value to me or those around me? And just having that honest conversation with ourselves really allows us to peer in many doors that we weren't able to see before. And it helps us identify what things that we're doing that aren't helping people, that aren't helping us or others. Yeah, I love that you tied that into really thinking about others and this this new energy, like the new world that we're really stepping into. And this whole like we are one, we are connected, and this unity conversation is to think about others, like think about the whole collective. And how how are we how are we serving everyone? So I love that. One of the big blocks to unlearning, just from a straight up learning perspective, is uh, our lack of consciousness. We tend to go through life on autopilot, you know, and 
in a lot of ways, that's a really good thing. I mean, think about if you had to actually think about the steps to even just get out of bed in the morning. Uh, it would like to lift your head and get like you, you, you'd never get out of bed because there's too much involved. So a lot of what happens in us as biological human animals just happens. We don't need to think about it. And the more proficient we get at something, the longer that we're in a field, the longer we have experience with things, the more we absorb unconsciously, just this is how it works. And these are the ways we do it. And we recognize patterns. And then when things change and evolve, particularly if it's volatile and unpredictable and constantly changing, that becomes very stressful to us because uh, as Andrew, I think, touched on, we, we confuse those experiences with stability. And then that does move us into to fear. So we have to do the hard work of becoming consciously competent is the sort of official in theory term for it, which is hard work to, to actually pull our subconscious, why am I doing this, out um, and then we have to be, as Andrew said, we have to be vulnerable and go on a learning journey. And when we're children and we're learning, you know, when we're surrounded by adults and little toddlers are getting up and trying to walk, we all go, yay, oh, good work, get up, go again. But we go through the same process when we're adults and people go, you stupid idiot, how could you fail at this? Why aren't you competent? You've been doing it three seconds and look at the job you're in. You're supposed to know what you're doing. So we sort of learn that we don't, we like, don't, don't go there. Well, we all have to go there. And those are huge barriers to unlearning. And then our attachment with no, this is right. It's right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. That, that certainty, huge barriers, but just the act of unlearning and then relearning. That's actually, it's not very easy. It's quite complicated and tiring. Yeah, it's not something that gets a lot of press, typically. The, the, the process in learning and education in school is that learn this, learn this, learn that. I don't ever recall hearing the word unlearning or even relearning, but unlearning, letting go, anything like that until I was out of school. And I went to school for a lot of years. Until I was out of school for a long period of time and then helping, helping other people. Help, usually it came as a function of helping other people. And the thing that I observe is, it is much, much easier, not necessarily more fun, but it is easier to actually unlearn in, an, in, an, in a group or in a community so if, of trusted advisors. So you can actually help each other learn and unlearn versus by myself, just doing the same thing all the time, expecting it to happen the way it would always happen. And I see that, especially in businesses and the businesses start getting successful and the senior executives they got successful doing certain things and they're going to keep on doing those things until they don't work anymore. And if someone, if in fact they have another reason to actually blame the results on other people, they're going to blame the, the results on other people, the climate, the U S dollar, the economy, the whatever. And the work always starts inside. So I've, I, unlearning is fascinating and deep, 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 and not particularly comfortable. Yeah, I think the beauty the the beauty of what's happened in the last couple of years is that like Andrew was saying all of our routines were totally changed. Yeah. So whether we liked it or not, we had to unlearn and we were unlearning and things have been unraveling really since then and it's just been way more in our face that we have to evolve. And then, you know, technology has accelerated and amplified our evolution because like we said before we turn the cameras on live is the playing field has been leveled. Everybody is a broadcaster now. Everyone mm -hmm. can put their voice out there and share. And, you know, the generations of the, the sunnies of the world and the TikTokers and, you know, Stephanie, who's been joining us, like you guys can, you know, put your thoughts out there. And the way that we can learn is totally different than previous generations. And so we can have our mind open and expanded quicker and quicker and then validated quicker and quicker. And so that, that for me is what, what I see through my lens. I'd love to hear Andrew in your world, because I know you talk to a lot of different, um, like I, you were doing uh, coaching circles and different things. Um, I'd love for you to kind of touch on anything you feel here. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because um, where my mind was going was, um, 
was was more back back into the business space actually where you know i do i work with a lot of, of young students um or like master's level students in in entrepreneurship and innovation and you know unlearning is the heart of what innovation really is and in fact it's also at the heart of what good entrepreneurship is it's you know so much of the world we live in right now is just like an iteration on somebody else's thinking but the real breakthroughs happen you know when a guy figures out why does it cost so much to send a rocket you know into space <laughs> why couldn't we use that rocket again like that's a that's an unlearning of a technology being developed over many many decades that's now opened up huge possibilities for space travel in lots of different ways right it's it's changed the the baseline thinking and i think you know that's exciting to me and it's really exciting to me to be here and to hear it from sunny's generation you know i've got four daughters similar age range to sunny and i see it in them like they <laughs> They shake my their heads at the the way that their parents have thought for so long. It just makes no sense to them. Like, how could you have thought that was the right way to operate this planet? Mm -hmm. And I I am so excited by that because that sort of new earth thinking, uh, nice plug for Sunny, is yeah. is what we need, right? Yes. Like we can't. It's not going to come from the same thinking done 2% better. It's going to come from that unlearning process that Tim mentioned is not easy for us older folks, but for yes. a young generation, it's it's the way they see the world. They, they, they can see very plainly that this is not sustainable, both yes. not just environmentally, but socially not sustainable. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, this is such a critical topic and... But mainly for those of us who've got the layers and layers of stories that we're still trying to unravel. Um, yeah. And I love the fact that you've opened this conversation up to multi-generational because I feel better about the future every time I talk to young students about what they're doing and how they want to make a difference. Yeah, I love that you added that. And it's the same for me. And, you know, I was, you know, as being one of the younger generations here in my thir 38 I you know I had that that thinking that the like the sunny when I met sunny I was like yes and it you also sunny helped re remember remind me at, at points of yes I know this to be true okay I gotta check myself where am I still holding on to stories that's not possible like where am I still taking on projections from you know, some old world thinking that is limiting me and preventing me from, from growing and expanding. So I so agree with you, Andrew, on that. And I love, we need to listen to the younger generations more and more and more than, more than listen with our head. We need to feel, we need to feel the energy that they're, they're emitting just in their being. And like you said, this, the, our literally our neural pathways in our brain, like the older we get become more and more thicker so it's like literally becomes physically more more challenging to to let go of the stories over time we talk about that all the time so um yeah I, you work with old people sarah well, I'd, love to, I'd love to jump in on the fat neural pathways sure I, yeah you, we talk about that often you your, no you keep riffing i was just going to look for the the end of that well i was just going to say like i thank you sunny like really for 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 being here and it is very exciting to because i don't hang i have i told him like i haven't hung on young people like i don't have kids or daughters or anything so thank you for having me on here i always love talking to older generations you guys carry so much wisdom and knowledge i just feel like i feel like a sponge i just like just absorbing trying to and that's absorb what as I love much about, as i can that's what i love about sunny and the younger generations as well it's like we understand we all need each other because there's wisdom and experience and it's like similar to the playing field is leveled as broadcasters. It's like the, the playing field is leveled in terms of how we can, who we can learn from, how we can learn, like we can all learn from one another. Okay. Go Tim. Okay. Okay. Well, I was, I was going to um, paraphrase Rick Spence, who was on the, on the, the last, uh, last week he was on with us on this lead live and he was uh, surprised or amazed that uh, Stephanie, who was you know, half his age was speaking about, 
the challenge that she has with letting go or unlearning. unlearning. So he was the one who suggested this topic, unlearning. Hmm. And the interesting thing with, uh, for, through my lens is yes, I got the big fat neural pathways. Absolutely. So it's in, it's in the brain in, in that form. But, but through epigenetics, we now understand that we actually have inherited seven generations of patterns at the subconscious level. So in the young generation, it's even a deeper and it's not as much out there to be able to go and help steer with new stories. So the stories that the young generation are telling themselves consciously or mostly unconsciously are going to get them stuck faster because they have neural pathways that are faster. And the opportunity here in between the intergenerational is to be able to go and help each other is having banged away at it at the subconscious level for lots of years. There are fast tracks to be able to go and um, change your thinking at the subconscious level that I think is going to accelerate this because I totally agree. The young generation are just saying, you look at around this and you go, you did this so that you could work like crazy. So you had 10 years, maybe 20 years at the end of your life when you're all freaking crippled and everything else. And that's when you retire and you have a great time. That just seems like crazy. And, you know, there's a lot of logic to that. That does seem like it's a bit crazy. So there's just an awesome opportunity within the intergenerational uh, vibe to be able to go and share wisdom, having actually been in the trenches for a long time or having never, ever even been in the trenches uh, in terms of dealing with difficulties around old patterns you absorb from your great, great, great grandmother that you had no idea about. There, that was that left them all kind of, and there were the, there, then that's right. <laughs> that was a Tim mic drop moment. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a big, it's a really big deal. The unlearning. I remember Sharon introducing it as unlearning. It's hard enough to learn, and and so many people are actually learning. In my experience, learning about digital and getting on digital space and doing digital and social media and everything else, and they're still using the being functioning in their brains and they're i mean in my observation given what we do there's just a lot of people getting the same results even if you're just all over digital all over the place because you're bringing you to the party there we go there was an attempt to pass a mic then <laughs> i'm my i'm called to be curious about where rome's mind is at right now i was just gonna say that andrew thank you mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. No, I, you know, I love what everyone's saying. And I, th and I think we're all in agreement that um, when you have a shift in perception, whether it's, you know, uh, force, natural, or, you know, um, intentional, when you have that shift in perception, you're going to see things differently. Um, a lot of people that I work with over at Studio Rome um, are going through a spiritual awakening. So they're unknowingly you know coming into this event and they're seeing things differently oh. and it's and like sharon said it can be confusing it can be troubling right especially if you don't know what you're going for um yeah. but the unlearning of what you've already known and the shift into seeing something different right that's that's within your own path and your own speed how it comes to you and how you shift over to that is is really on your attention and where you want to place your your mindfulness because letting go of modalities and lessons that you learn from say like your parents or religion or something like that and learning new ways or actually seeking new ways to do things it could be confusing but it doesn't have to be difficult it's just different it's just different and so I, I urge everyone that's going through a process like that, like Tim said, to get in the community or get with someone who's been through these experiences. Everyone here has been through that awakening experience. And everyone here had a moment of confusion and overwhelming and emotions and everything seemed to be different. But you can trust everyone here also to say at the back end of that, if you apply yourself, it's, it's well deserved. Yeah. Beautifully said. And that is, that's the, that's the, the thing and I was reading um, a couple of years ago spontaneous evolution by Bruce Lipton and he spoke about how this next part of our evolution we talk about as a jump point in evolution and even astrology and astrologers and many people are talking about this next phase of being so community oriented and evolving in community 
And so how, how do we evolve in an interdependent community when this has never been done before? And that, that jump point is like letting go or sometimes the rug is literally pulled underneath you, which I like to say was done for me and I broke my ankle because I was still had parts of me that wanted to hold on to something familiar from the past because I felt like I was just floating out in space and nowhere and didn't have any sort of solid foundation to like, oh, this is what I, this is where I can feel safe or this is what I can believe in or this is what I can trust. Well, my whole inner world was being rewired on in ori reorienting what, how to trust myself or who to trust. Like it, like you said, it can be so disorienting and scary. And then the beauty of technology and innovation that the younger generations and older generations and, you know, visionaries have been foreseeing this time happening is creating these community structures where we can say we are the new, we are together co-creating yeah the new and the new is actually unknown and mysterious. And Hey, what if we actually signed up for that? What if we actually discovered that our joy is in not knowing the answer and how can we find safety and not understanding the how of things? Um, so it's all to say is <laughs> community is, is so, so important and having these conversations where, you know, it's a, non-judgmental, open floor. Let's talk about it. I, I love your, your uh, the opportunity for me to get a segue relative to we came here to the planet to have fun in the unknown and bang around and learn such. And, and I, I just picked up the book by your recommendation, Sarah, uh, uh, written by Sadhguru, which is Death. And I haven't been into it too thickly, but I've just been into it for about the first 25 pages. And it's just such a fantastic reframe. It's it's me unlearning really quickly reading his his work, because from his perspective, death you don't have to work at it. Like death is just kind of like it's just it just happens. You you don't have to prep for it. You don't have to get all fussed about it. It just happens. And the idea is death from his perspective lasts for a long time. The the, the opportunity with life is to see it as an opportunity to go up and down and sideways and try this, try that. Do this like this, fail over here, get yourself up again, learn, unlearn, relearn, be learn, whatever, the whole thing. That's the fun part. But if you've got it mixed up and you're fearing death, well, then you put a whole bunch of energy into, whoa, 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 whoa we got to slow this whole thing down, which then keeps you in the same ruts and same, same old, same old. He says, that's missing the opportunity here. You're out there supposed to be splashing around. Oh my gosh, I'm drowning. No, I'm not. Someone came and helped me. Oh, it was me. I hit the bottom of the boat. Like, that's the fun of it. And I have I have just faint recollections now and again when, when we, we were together off planet and planning this whole thing and thinking, yes, that should be fun. You know, you get this thing, you get the cancer thing. Look at how much excitement that will create. But it's only fleeting at times. I, you know, I'm joking. <laughs> I was thinking, what the hell? But it is. It, there's a real deep wisdom in that saying, like death is just kind of you're hanging around. Maybe, maybe it's fun on the other side. I don't know. But over here, this is really, really opportunity to learn in a big way, and then unlearn like crazy at this point in time. You know, unlearning is is really just an evolution of of who you are. Yeah. Right. So the the quicker you can unlearn something, the more you're going to, you know, revolve and the more you're going to, you know, grow in your own self. So you shouldn't be intimidated by unlearning things. Right. I mean, it's just it's just a, a, a perception that you had, whether it was given to you or you developed it yourself. Everything comes and goes, as we know. So uh, learning a new way or unlearning to learn a new way. And that's just growth. Let it happen. I love that attitude. Let it yeah. flow. <laughs> Un unlearning, unlearning things helps create space for the new to come in, for new yeah. new programs to be entered in. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In my experience, it feels a bit wonky. So that's the part that's the wonkiness. I mean, when I go, whoa, that's really weird. It, you know, and another thing, it can feel wonky for other people around you. Right? Um I'll just share a, a short story. I'll keep it as vague as possible. But, you know, I had learned uh, how to process my emotions differently. I had, I had unlearned the way that it was, you know, I had learned before. So I, I process them differently. So people that, um, that know me, 
uh, maybe haven't seen me for a while because of the COVID and everything, then they get around me again, they're just like taken back. This is not you. This is not the same thing. You know, I'm not, I'm not used to this, you know, response, you know, um, so it could be wonky for other people. I had I'm going through uh, something of a personal step right, right now. I'm going to just open up and share this with you. Sure. Uh, my mother who I haven't, haven't spoken with in a long time is in the hospice right now. And it's a, it's a natural instinct for people around me to say, Oh, you got to go to her. Oh, you got to hold your hand. You got to be there with her and this and that. And if you knew the backstory, we just don't have that relationship. Right. So for me, I unlearned how I was, I was going to experience that when it came to that point, I already, you know, prep myself as it were, but the people around me who love me and, and who, who, had maybe an association with my mother at one point in, in her life are just like completely beside the fact that I'm not doing what they all expect me to do or what they expect society to do. So, uh, you know, don't be too alarmed when you, when you, you know, feel differently about something that, that a group of people or maybe even your family think differently. You're just growing. You're going through your own growth experience. That is such a, a powerful thing to add. So thank you for sharing that vulnerability. Cause I, I know I feel you on that one. I've had my own challenges with family things in the last few years and, and uh, Sharon, you said it on the Sharon hour yesterday, when we, when we really step into our power, our big power can trigger other people. And I've spent a lot of my time owning the triggers of others and putting myself back into a box to make the people that I love comfortable and yet I was making myself sick in doing that. And that to circle back to what I had shared in the beginning was like learning um, what love really is and what unconditional love is. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people in my life who, who don't see that my actions have been loving. And yet mm -hmm. what I have been learning is like everything starts with ourself love starts with myself and so self-love unconditional love that has to start with me and there's going to be a disruption when we make those internal changes with our external reality and that's for me how i frame what's happening on the world right now is a lot of people are making internal shifts and so it looks hella messy as the younger generation i like that one hella it may it looks a hella messy because it takes time for our physical reality to change at the pace of our internal reality. So we can get caught up in looking at the mess and thinking, oh, humanity's going to shit. <laughs> but really it's just reorganizing itself to be the most authentic, the most loving space. And that is what I continually center and ground and orient myself when I do see stuff going on around that looks like, you know, we're losing it as a species and say, no, 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 everyone, you know, I trust, I have faith that, that humanity is, is getting into their heart. And one, one of, uh, somebody that I really love, Carolyn Mice Mace has written many books, Spirit of the Anatomy. And she, she speaks about the evolution as well, that we're, we're all learning um, like we're going through this journey of our, our chakras, our energy centers, as the yogis talk about. And we are coming to the heart, like we're understanding the power of the heart and we're understanding the power of what that really means to be connected as a species at the heart. And we only are glimpsing that power at this point in time. Um, so so that, that really, really helps me. At the heart of unlearning, for it to be a more comfortable and graceful process, by graceful I mean it just flows a little easier. Um, you really, the, the key is acceptance and surrender. But we are quite conditioned to believe, certainly our generation, and the generations before us, I don't know so much, Sunny, about you, that we sort of need to be uh, in control and, um, you know, get the right results and do the right things. And so that makes it very difficult. Acceptance becomes more challenging when we feel we have to control a whole world, right? Or even, even just our little part of the whole world and the people around us. 
And that's what disrupts people really, I think, foundationally is that if I change and when I change and I don't respond the way my family responds to things, then it, it disrupts everything for them and they need to get me back. And they think they, they, with every conscious thought, they think they are trying to keep me safe. No, this is the right way to live in the world. Don't go over there. It won't work. And they tag you as a black sheep. Well, yeah, eventually they do for sure. And I'm the black sheep of my family for sure. Nothing about me is anything remotely like pretty much anybody I have a very large family. I have a small nuclear family, but I have a very large extended family. And I'm sure none of them are watching this, but if they are, they're all going, oh, good God. It's like, we're on it. It's the Canadian thing. Yeah. It's the, she's Canadian. We can't help it. It's, she's the only Canadian and we just can't help it. She's just like that. The rest of us, we're all good, but she's crazy. So I think that's a big part of it is acceptance that whatever comes into our life, being able to accept and and flow with it and develop a belief and a trust that if we say if we just accept that this is happening because it's going to happen whether we want it to or not i can fight the fact that i don't want to have cancer and this isn't fair and it's really not fun and that's all true i don't want to have cancer you know it's never fair when you get sick and it really isn't fun however it is it is what it is <laughs> so you know what am I going to do about that? I don't want to have cancer. <clears throat> I hold my breath till I turn blue. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's that proverbial stick, you know, sitting in the current of a river and it's just fighting it all the way. And, just, you know, it just, it's not going to be uh, fruitful for you in the long run. No, not like that. That's for sure. That's for sure. I wanted to come back. There was, at some point, there was, uh, a comment about you standing out or not fitting in. And I, I, I love the, the little uh, metaphor of your, your plane, you're on a plane, it's going through turbulence. And the idea is always to put the mask on yourself first versus your neighbor and everybody else. And I always find that it's just a fascinating thing in a group setting when, when we recognize that the way I was taught was my goodness, it's your good Samaritan. What love is, is to put it all, you know, put the mask on everybody else that you love when and you get the pecking order in your mind and then maybe your neighbor over here. And then, and that is something that I've seen unconsciously happen all throughout my life all over the place. And it always presents the opportunity to say, well, if you're dead, like if you, you've just, you've run out of oxygen, you're not really going to be good. Well, you're not going to be good for yourself. But you're not going to be good to everybody else. Well, like, it's not going to help anybody. Well, then you a problem for everybody else in that situation. Right. And then you actually become very sanctimonious and you go, you owe me, you owe me. Like it, it does tend to actually create all kinds of problems. But in our society, in, in, in my learning experience, it was quite the, the journey to actually recognize uh, like leaders have to eat first. Like there, there was a book, Leaders Eat Last. Um, and I think, well, hi, you like leaders eat first, get yourself really solid so that you can help people and you can respond to whatever challenges or crisis might show up. But it runs so contrary to the way I think culturally we've, we've been evolved. And I mean, we could go into the, the COVID and the, the challenges, like there's just a whole pile of things playing out in society that says, you know what? We got to actually look after everybody and get everybody in there and then corral everybody and keep them contained and controlled and safe and that type of thing. And, and I think that we are now entering the stage, as you said a number of times, Sarah, is that we are evolving at a, at a rate of speed or whatever it is that's kicking us uh, up to the next notch where we need to actually look after ourselves first and then stay in a community where we're going to actually help each other with the gas masks or the, gas, or the, the oxygen masks or whatever it might be. And see how it evolves from there because we know how it evolves the other way absolutely and last week we talked about balance and what's coming to me is um until you find your your center and you you have that ability to be and stay centered and knowing like firmly who you are can you help others and i think that the exciting thing is that many, many people have been doing this, especially in the last couple of years where we've been forced to go inward and really look at that. And 
I'm excited for, for the future. For sure, there's going to be some disruption this year and the years to come, but the leaders who've been doing this work and understand the power of their heart and their authentic power, um, yeah, are, like, you, like you touched on, Andrew, the, the unlearning, those who are so willing to unlearn every single day are the ones who will bring innovation, and, and, and I'm seeing it in big ways all over the place. So before we wrap up, I want to go around with everyone and just kind of touch on like things you, you, you got inside you. I can see some of you have some things you just really want to share and add before we close out. So we'll go around the table again um, and then we'll go around the table and share what we're doing in our communities and how people can participate in what we're doing. So um, Rome, let's, let's start with you and we'll go around. Well, on? Sure. Um... If you're going through a process and you feel confused with all this it's a natural state stay fast right just just be calm let the process handle itself you're going to be okay beautiful that's trust stay on faith street my neighbor used to say stay on faith street sunny yeah stay on faith street and um yeah just uh be brave because it, it definitely takes courage to go out and question your own biases and all the things that you've learned in the past and just questioning that and challenging that definitely takes courage. It sure so. does. Well said. Tim. 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 Well, I love, I love putting things into questions that actually pop up for me all the time and especially around on learning when something happens I have found it really good and I, to the best of my ability, help other people reflect on three questions is what's good about this? How have I contributed to this? And how can I contribute to a solution? Because the typical thing with the amygdala hijack, when I actually get hit here is, is what's wrong with this? Who frigged it up and who's going to fix it? And that actually keeps us constantly in a victim stance. So being able to unlearn for me requires that I immediately put myself in the executive center rather than back here in the prehistoric part of my brain. They're going, what's good about this? So Sharon's got cancer. What's good about this? You know, how have I, how, how have I contributed? How can I contribute to solution? You know, what's good about whatever the scenario is. And it's, it, it is served me well. And I've, I've watched, you know, over the years with clients, it's such an easy, simple thing to do. And it's, typically not the way we respond and it is front and center the first step of unlearning for me I, I think the most important takeaway is that i i i don't know that the journey of deep unlearning is possible on our own uh you know as sunny said it takes tremendous courage to uh challenge mm -hmm. our own biases it, it also mm -hmm. takes some kind of mirror to point out to us because biases are unconscious for the most part. So we don't even really realize that it's a bias. We just think it's the truth. So I would encourage everyone to find communities and, and also engage with someone who can help you work through this process, particularly if you're at a time um, where there's a lot of unlearning or, it's a really challenging time in your life or you feel like all of the, the building blocks have been thrown up in the air. And Vicki, I agree completely, Vicki. It takes a safe, safe place, place to be. Yeah. So go find some people that you can be around. And, and if you happen to have a belief that says being independent is being strong, that's one of the first things I would encourage you to unlearn. Being strong is really about reaching out and getting help. None of us can do anything entirely independently on our own. Absolutely. Hmm. Well, for me, uh, a lot of takeaways. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, thank you so much for being here, Andrew. Yeah. I, you know, I think, you know, Rome's story um, stirred something in me. Uh, as a reminder of something I think I learned just a couple of years ago now, which is um, probably the most 
important unlearning I've had in, in my life so far. And that's, you know, what forgiveness actually is about. Uh, I, I carried a story about my father for a long time, about uh, lack of support, lack of encouragement, lack of recognition, lack of belief in what I was doing, lack of this, lack of that. And I was the only one suffering from that. And, you know, I think unlearning forgiveness, and it's not letting somebody off the hook for something. It's letting ourselves off the hook for something mm-hmm. and, and choosing the way we want to feel and the way we want to be in the world. That has changed me fundamentally, as, as Rome said, you know, when people meet me now who knew me three, five, ten years ago, there's <laughs> it's like, did you go away to a Buddhist, you know, <laughs> event and, you know, and whatever. And I just say, no, you know, I woke up over a period of a couple of years and decided I wanted to be the one choosing how I felt from now on. And to me, you know, forgive, forgiveness, I know was at the heart of that. So mm. that's what came up for me today. And, and Rome, I wish you much love on, on dealing with your situation. And um, thank you, brother. You in my heart. Thank you, brother. Oh, I feel that love. Oh, that's so good. And that is, I battled with that same thing, Andrew. I held on to, oh, it, and it was self, self-forgiveness self about how I needed to live my life and how, how long I carried guilt and shame for who I was fundamentally because of the people that I, I felt so loyal to and, and love so deeply so oh i could cry with that thank you so much for sharing that because i know that many no oh, sunny's back i know many many people are likely will val- will definitely value that story you guys aired welcome back sunny um okay those were great final thoughts whoo <laughs> so let let's Did finish sunny get a final thought in sarah um, Sonny, Sonny had a thought. He, we went, okay. we went around. Yep. He, he's now in a different position. But if you want to add That's a so final thought, because <laughs> yours was so quick. Yeah, I'll add a final thought since I moved positions. Uh, yeah, like since you moved positions, thing. that's why you did it, right? So you could have a second. Oh, yeah, thought. yeah. So I can get twice in that. No, I just wanted to express my gratitude and thank you. Thank you all for sharing your stories today. Uh, I learned I learned a lot. So thank you. Thank you for sharing thank your you for knowledge being and wisdom. So open to learning. Yes. Yeah, thank you, you really so. are. You are such an inspiration. Yeah, bright light. You really are. Thank yeah. you. I, I appreciate that. That just makes that just makes me feel good inside. And it's just inspiring hearing that from all the different generations. It's it's, it's pretty sweet. So mm. thank you. Beautiful. What a beautiful thing. Thank you guys all so much for just wearing your heart on your sleeve and being vulnerable. Like this, these, I feel these are the, the ways we create safe space for others to then go out in their communities and do the same thing. And I know that so many people really long for these types of intimate connections and being able to do that through digital. I mean, being in person, obviously nothing beats it, but nowadays, you know, digital is, is here. And so. Thank you. Thank you all for taking the time on your Sunday to be here. Thank you all to the viewers for your participation. We can feel your love. We we hope we're sending you so much love. And if you're watching the replay, thank you. We check all the comments, engage with us in our community, which is our safe space, our flow network community on Facebook, where we invite you to share your thoughts of the broadcast of all of the themes that we talk about each week. We love hearing from you. And that's why the Flow Content Creation Challenge was created so that you can participate in these conversations with us and share your video, share your voice. Um, This is what I feel the world needs. We need these conscious conversations. So thank you. Uh, Rome, let's go around the table once more before we wrap up and share how people can engage with you, what you're sharing in your community, all that. Sure. Uh, the location is studiorome.space. It is a, uh, a multifaceted website where I'm selling uh, my current work and I have a gallery for my older work. 
Um, it's also a spot where you can pick up on the podcast that we're doing with New Earth Project, called Come As You Are, where we're interviewing um, influencers and creators. And uh, it also is a spot where you can come and check out the services that we offer, coaching services to get you through your spiritual waking or meditations or working with couples and such. So that's where you'll find us. We're on social media everywhere, and you'll see my um, daily blog on the Flow Network community. And I hope to see you soon. Is my podcast coming out soon? We did one. When's that? Uh, yours is on the 17th. It's going to it's gonna come out on the 17th. You can see that on the Studio Room um, YouTube channel. And I'm sure you will be able to see it across the, uh, the media networks. Awesome. Thank you, Rome. You're welcome. Sharon, Tim, what do you want to share? Got the Sharon Hour right. on Saturday. Sharon Hour on Saturday. Yeah, Sharon Hour. My intention with the Sharon Hour is... You know, my uh, given the kind of work that I've done my whole career as an educator, I get asked lots like, how do you manage in your life? How come you're always so calm? And does anything ever get you flapped? And yes, absolutely. Things get me flapped uh, and I fall apart like every other human. Uh, but I am very well resourced. Uh, and that has clearly helped me uh, most recently with my dance with cancer. So given the increased challenges that everybody is facing and where I am in my life, I am very dedicated to sharing as much of what I've learned as I possibly can to help anyone at all develop the internal resourcefulness to show up and be present regardless of what is happening in your life. So that's what that's all about. Beautiful. And you, and Sharon's the next episode on Saturday is with her mentor, Fred, who she's worked with. Um, and he worked with the Maharishi for 20, 30 years, I think you guys said. So that's a really great episode. Tim. Tim. Tim's getting his legs moving. Tim's in big transit these days. We've got just a lot of things going on. I, I think I've got a podcast idea. And then Tim's moving service. <laughs> resources. Uh, so Tim is, is, Getting the wheels moving, um, and I and I help uh, businesses improve performance, and have been doing so for quite some time. And it's in this in COVID times, it's uh, the challenge is being able to reach business uh, leader owners uh, where they're at in their journey, which is in my experience a lot of which is actually trying to figure out COVID and the implications to their business as opposed to the people. Be it, but I do see that changing at this point, as it has in any other crisis that's happened in two thousand and eight and two thousand and one. So this is a really awesome opportunity to be uh, helping in a community context. Beautiful. Andrew, what's going on in your world? Well, yeah, this next phase of my life is quite interesting. Um, I, I think the theme of it is untethering. Um, untethering. It's a little book called Untethered Soul that was uh, love that book. Yeah, yeah. Made, a, made a big difference in my life. And um, untethering for me is actually um, a year and a half from now, I'll be setting off to sail around the world for a year. And so it's a, it's a very literal thing to be untethered. Um, and the process to get there personally and to get there from a business perspective is fascinating to go through. And mm -hmm. so letting go um, sounds like that was a topic. Unlearning. Today's topic, all very much part of that untethering process. And lo and behold, as the universe does, I seem to be attracting a lot of people who are looking to untether <laughs> from something in their own lives as well. As That's what happens when, when that's our energy. So that's, that's the theme for me going ahead. That's amazing. And I look forward to, you have a Facebook group for sharing on your adventure for sailing mm -hmm. around the world. Um, so if you want to put that in the comments for people to, if they're interested, because sure. what an adventure, what an adventure. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Andrew. Sunny. Yeah, that is quite the adventure sailing around the world. That sounds, that sounds like a fantastic time, but, uh, you can check out the new earth project on new earth project on info. And our main thing that we're offering right now is a awakening we do a an awakening indicators live show every single wednesday at 8 p.m eastern time and it's really great for it's to, it's uh, geared towards helping people kind of navigate navigate their awakening and kind of um 
feeling into it and accepting it and such. And we're going to be making all those videos private soon. We only have a couple weeks left of the live shows before they go private. So if you want to check that out, you can uh, head over to newearthproject.info and it'll be right there. And one last thing is, Rome already mentioned this, but the Come As You Are podcast, we're partnered with Studio Studio Rome. He's, uh, he's the host for our Come As You Are podcast, which is just, it's a podcast that interviews other conscious creators. Sonny was our first guest, which is a fantastic interview. Oh, it was, it was awesome. It was a ton of fun. Awesome. Yes. And Tim and I have been on uh, the New Earth Project show on the Awakening Indicators on, on more than a few of them at eight o'clock. So it was it's definitely been a joy to be there and to be a part of of your generation and just just talk about it. It's it's been so enriching for us. Uh, and you have wonderful meditations that you that you weave at the end of those as well, which are so powerful. So thank you again, all the leaders here today. Thank you for your presence at the table. Um, so, so valuable. Thank you to, again to all of our viewers. Uh, share this if you found it helpful. And again, join us in our Flow Network community. We would love to see you there. Uh, that's it for today. We'll see you next week where we'll have another theme. And if you have an idea that you would love for us to talk about, please share it. We would love to hear from you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Over and out. Bye. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. If you're looking for a conscious community, we invite you to Flow Network 99. Wake up, show up, light up, let's flow, baby.